Hi everybody, Doug Hippie again from EAC Product Development Solutions with another tip of the week. Today we're going to talk about hole annotations when you're using the hole tool. You'll notice on my screen I've got an annotation that's up there right now and there's a few elements that I want to discuss. First off is how do I select it so I can make a change to it? Well if you come down here to your smart filter in the lower right hand corner there's a selection for annotation. You set that to annotation and then you have access to be able to highlight and pick it. So if you want to edit it, just double click on it and it'll get you into the attributes of the note. Now, say I don't like the annotation that I see right there, so I can uh, get rid of some of these things. So I can take the parameters out that I don't want. So in this uh, example here, I don't want to show the thread series. If I edit that out of there, you'll notice that it's now gone. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We don't want to have the thread class shown in there either. So we're going to take out the thread class. And you'll notice that now I've gotten rid of the series and as well as the class. Maybe I don't want to show uh, what letter or, or number drill is in there. Same basic thing. If I want to get rid of the diameter, let's say I don't want to have it show the number size drill or what uh, drill it is. I can just go ahead and select that, say OK. Now you'll notice also that I have the ability, if I were to pattern this, it would also populate the quantity. So I can turn that off and on also, but let's just take a look at that quick. So what you get is a parameter called ampersand pattern number. That is an actual a quite handy feature so that when you go to show your dimensions in your drawings, you don't have to say what the quantity is because that quantity has already been tabulated. Now, let's say this is what I want to show, and I want to add that to my existing whole file. So I can come into my parameters here and select everything. So get it all and copy, and copy that into the clipboard on my computer. Say OK, and that's what I have. The next trick is to locate where your .hol file is. Now it's going to be different for Creo Elements Pro 5.0 than it is for Creo Parametric, but it'll be a similar location once you get there. So in Creo 1, you navigate to the load point of Creo 1, you look in the Common Files folder, and then it'll show you the build of that folder, and then you scroll down to where it shows the text folder. Double tick, click into that text folder so that you activate it, and in there is another folder called Whole. All right, so here's what I've got. I've got my Creo load point. I've got the common files, the build code, the text folder, and then I'm in the whole file. Now, I want to add a new whole file because I've made some changes to that one. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into position. Okay, and I'm just going to rename this one so that it's called Doug. And that's a new one. Now we're going to open up that whole file and take a look at some of the attributes from within this whole file. So there's different areas here where it says thread series. I'm going to change that to read Doug also. What this is going to do is it's going to drive the drop down in your whole ribbon when you're in the whole tool itself. I'll go ahead and save that quick. Now the other thing I want to do is add to the callout format. So I'm going to go back over to my uh, Creo parametric session. I'm going to copy everything over into my clipboard. I'm going to open this file back up and then I'm just going to add that right here to the callout format. What this does is this tells Creo when I create a whole file this is the format that I want it to follow. So I can edit this thing accordingly so I have whatever I would like to have it show and then save that that file. Now I'm just going to go ahead and, and say OK to this. Now the one element that I want to uh, make you aware of is if I were to go in and let's say I wanted to create another hole here. So I'm going to go in. I like to pre-select the surface I'm going to place my hole, anchor it with my references, move it to its location, tell it that I'm going to put a tab tool in here. You'll notice that Doug doesn't exist here you have to restart Creo Parametric in order for that to take effect. So it has to go into that load point text folder, 
look in the whole folder and it's going to load up all of those .hol files and give you access then. So basically what will happen is I'll, I will see that Doug as a selection in the drop down for my tapped holes. You can, what you can do is create files for a counter bar hole set, a counter sink hole set, and then any other types of hole sets that you might want to have. And you can uh, alter the attributes accordingly from within the ribbon prior to creating those so that you set that environment and establish those holes for those different areas. So in other words, use this whole file, edit the annotation to what your internal standards are, then go in and edit the whole files themselves. So you've got one created for doing your counterboard holes. You've got a whole file for creating your, for creating your countersunk holes. And you have a whole file that introduces your tapped holes with the appropriate annotation. Allow the standard whole files to remain intact so that you don't uh, disrupt those. If you have any questions, be more than happy to guide you through this process. Contact your friendly EAC account manager. Let them know that you saw Doug on the tip of the week showing editing whole files and you'd like to get some more information. Thanks again for watching. This is Doug Hippie with EAC Product Development Solutions with another tip of the week. Have a great week.